So our next guest speaker, our first of the afternoon, is Linda, Linda Bowie. And uh, for her fun fact, she took up rock climbing over the past year and she loves it. All right, thank you, Linda. I'll let you think about that for a minute. Rock climbing in Louisiana where we don't have any mountains. Um, can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, in the back, okay. Um, you can't see me, I know. Um, so I'll try to stand over here a little bit. So before, um, so some of you know, I've worked historically on ants. Um, before the oil spill, um, there was a change in the funding for ants. Um, USDA changed how they were organized. And so in the late 2000s, I kind of saw this coming and realized that I was gonna lose funding sources, which we now is as your professor, it's your bread and butter. So in 2008 and 2009, my career completely did a big shift and I started looking, reading about um, marsh ecosystems in the Gulf Coast. And I decided in 2009 that I wanted to work on arthropods, um, terrestrial arthropods in the marsh. And I recruited a student from China who came and started working here, you'll see, uh, Shuan Chen. And we started kind of looking at this with the idea to look at food webs with the arthropods and uh, insects and spiders, I should clarify, and kind of look at how we, the goal was to look at tropical storms and hurricanes. So you can imagine what happened when the oil spill happened. I had somebody who worked for wildlife and fisheries and a former student calling me saying, hey, your experiments are about to get really ruined. And so we had some um, experience. And so we, um, and what I found, uh, what you'll find out is that it was relatively an unstudied system. And uh, we had only just kind of started looking um, and get, gathering funding and things like that. We were still walking into marshes, not taking boats. Um, but the justification was this, and you, as you'll, and I'm hopefully leading into uh, uh, Mike Polito's talk, is that the insects and spiders are important because they're food for frogs, fish, and birds. And some of you have heard me say that phrase many, many, many times. And so um, I'll, I'll get to why we know that, um, but there's, so I'm gonna talk about what we didn't know, a lot of what we didn't know. So we were very interested, of course, in insects uh, and spiders and hurricanes. And, um, and then we had this uh, thing that we call the oil spill, but I prefer to call it a drilling disaster. Um, some of you know that spills indicate a contained thing and that was not contained at all. So, and then we had low level hurricane, Hurricane Isaac, and tro several tropical storms. And so I have spent the last nine years teasing out the impacts of these multiple stressors. And I was really glad to see uh, my colleagues talk about those multiple stressors. And um, we think that we know from what we've learned, uh, either through the literature or through our experience, is that the insects are, are huge consumers of either the primary uh, production or they're involved in decomposition. And of course, there's a food web within the... Um, and so we said that, hey, these insects can be used as indicators of stress. And it's easy because nobody cares that I'm out there killing insects because PETA doesn't consider them animals. Um, and there's, they're highly abundant, and so they're easy to get, and they're, they're easy to collect, and people think they're easy to identify. Well, what we found out is when we started working is that we really didn't know who was there and how to best collect them. So how do I know that they're food for frogs, fish, and birds? Well, mostly because I was out there and I was observing it. Um, we've seen little the green tree frogs out there and different um, other frogs out in the marsh um, eating the insects. We see fish, and um, Mike will probably tell you a little bit more about this, but they will either eat the larval um, insects that are in the um, water or they actually will nudge the um, plants and the insects fall off, or if the water knocks the insects off, they'll eat the insects there. Um, and also we know from a little bit of data that they're in uh, grackle and rail. Um, 
rail uh, stomach contents. So when I went to do a literature search, um, I found out about John Teal. I got to meet him eventually. So he, um, before I was born, started doing research on insects in the marsh with his wife Mildred. They wrote this wonderful book. Um, and, but it was mostly off of um, Sapelo Island in Georgia. And he had come to the coast, but he, uh, the Gulf Coast, but he hadn't published anything. And so, um, and we know from Audubon that he found um, clapper rails. He observed them eating grasshoppers and other insects, not identified. Um, and then since 19, the 1950s, we've seen them referenced in bird stomach contents. But for the most part, you know, Deno and all these major insect ecologists have only worked on the East Coast. So when we looked deeper into the literature, we find people who looked at invertebrates, which is very common to see in the literature, but most of them have a statement in there that says insects and arachnids are excluded. Um, as I go through the talk, you might figure out why. Um, so you see lots of information about charismatic megafauna that have had their uh, their uh, stomachs examined, and that's where we see the mentions of the insects, but for the most part, they are almost always not identified. So before we went out to the Gulf of Mexico, I estimated that we had about 100 species, and I thought I was probably uh, being very generous there. Uh, if you know, typically the, the Spartina, which is now Sporobolus, is, you know, mostly a monoculture in this area. And so I thought, well, you know, that's pretty diverse. But um, so I wanted to put this out there um, because it makes me look pretty dumb. Um, but we hypothesized, although it sounds right, right? But we found out we were really wrong, um, that the ground dwelling insects and spiders would be affected. So where the oil came in, obviously that's gonna kill insects. Um, we also said that on the plants, where the plants were oiled, the herbivores were gonna be impacted. And I also said that uh, following some other ecological hypotheses, Petchley and some other people, that that would manifest itself up the food chain and we'd see wasps and other things that tend to be higher up on the food web would be impacted. So we would see this. Um, so, but we assumed that most of the insect and spider population, if they were up on the plants and not actually on the sediment or on the oiled um, plants that they were they would be fine. So I was really, really, really wrong, except for in a small amount. Okay, so we're going to talk about how wrong I was. Um, so one of the things that happened was, you know, you trained as an entomologist, you go out, you collect insects in lots of different ways. Um, so there is um, lots of different ways. I thought uh, you're going to see a couple different ways in my um, presentation, but that is a vacuum on the back of Max, my student, that Schwann's helping him, and it's very heavy, and this is a way that insects, like um, entomologists go, and they start sweeping this thing through the marsh, and they suck up all the insects and spiders that they can. Okay, so my friend C. Penning did this um, right after the oil spill. Well, we had a different tactic, um, but and we realized, wow, you know, there's all these different ways to collect insects. Let's actually do an experiment and measure how, um, how to best do this. Now, this is actually after the oil spill that we finally got a hold of this. And, um, and so I'm just going to show you a little bit about what we were able to find. So this is mixing, asking the question is, is sweeping or vacuuming the insects the best way to do it? And... Um, what we had oiled and unoiled areas. And I want to tell you that there's a caveat with this is this work was done like six days after Tropical Storm Lee. And I'm going to get back to the impacts of those hurricanes. Um, and so this um, Max and Schwann and I went running around the marsh. I did the sweeping and they did the vacuuming. Um, and so I have these uh, genus names here, the genera that listed. But don't you, they're just mostly for me. But the picture represents that for you, okay? So the grasshopper or Katie did like things. Um, you can see that for the most part, sweeping did better. And um, and these plant bugs, so these are, the, all everything except for the ant is an herbivore. 
And so you can see that sweeping was better than um, the vacuuming. The vacuuming really underestimated the population. And then if you look at the oiled versus unoiled as, there, as are all our data added together, is you can see how vacuuming would completely underestimate um, the insects in the oiled areas. The one thing I want to show you too is typically what we were seeing is some areas that were oiled, we initially saw almost no insects and no spiders. And then as this went on, so this is over a year after the oil spill in September of 2011, is you can see that like Ischnodemus, which is these uh, cord grass bugs, look at the high numbers up there on the, uh, the 106 versus um, 38. So that is, um, that is a symptom that those plants are very stressed and they give out chemicals, pheromones, calling in those insects. Also, they are not putting um, energy into defending themselves. So those um, herbivores are just attacking those plants. So that's an interesting result. Same thing with these thrips. So the interesting about these little tiny thrips is the one of the, the top one actually was pretty even on oiled and unoiled, but the numbers were really high. But the, the bottom one, the numbers went way up. And what we were seeing is that if you add all the insects together, some of those are going to cancel each other out. So you have what they look very similar, they're in the same feeding guild, but some of them are responding to the stress of the plants more. And so what we took from this is we really have to make sure we get these things identified down as far as we can rather than just lumping them all together as these are things that are feeding on the plants and because um, otherwise they can start to cancel each other out and then you, you're not actually investigating the system. Okay, I have to talk about ants. Um, so it's interesting because these um, acrobat ants, you can see they're pretty uh, well represented in, in unoiled and also oiled areas, but they did get hammered in the oiled areas. And, but it took a long time. This is the, when we first started seeing low numbers of acrobat ants. And we think that that was a food web effect because they're actually kind of high on the um, food web. The Pseudomermax, the lower one, it um, was present in this study only in the old areas. It was present in both places, but they're very cryptic. They spend a lot of time inside the plants. Um, and they also tend to be in more bushy plants and things like that, and not as often in the Spartina. So maybe they were far enough off of the Mars surface. So we know that, um, so this is the, where, um, where we did the study. Um, so getting closer in, closer in. And then by that red line is the track of Hurricane Isaac. And so the red dots are, um, are, do I have this pointer? Ah, um, so this is like, um, this is Bay Jimmy here. Um, these are Scott Zengel sites. By the way, thanks for replanting it. That site was really great. <laughs> um, and so these are oiled. These are, uh, we're gonna call them like unoiled or lightly oiled. And then over here, uh, most of those are relatively unoiled. We're gonna talk about that. You're gonna hear me kind of being wishy-washy. So this is Hurricane Isaac. Hurricane Isaac came um, ashore and it wobbled over South Louisiana, made two landfalls. It took about 72 hours for the storm surge to pass through. It also coordinated with a high tide at night. So my field plots were underwater uh, for most of the time. Um, and so this, we already, before Isaac hit, were very cautious because um, Tropical Storm Lee came through. It was only a tropical storm. Our um, sites were underwater for about 42 hours because it also corresponded with an evening um, high tide. And so we uh, knew pretty early on because I had this uh, kit that tested for TPHs out in the field that the, um, the hydrocarbons were getting moved around and we thought that after Tropical Storm Lee, some of our unoiled sites actually had um, small amounts of oil. So uh, Gene Turner and I, from the very beginning, have been um, collecting oil and, and getting it, working with that Overton's lab to get it analyzed. Um, so I had this idea that I would walk 100 meters into the marsh and do this 100 meter march, um, which I will tell you now is a really terrible idea in the, um, June and in September. Um, but it ended up being pretty fruitful because if you've been, if you've 
see that we have um, the aromatics and alkanes um, on this axis and the distance. And you can see that, that they went, this is the, the distance into the marsh. So um, they went 100 meters into the marsh in these, in these sites. Um, and again, you can see this. This is uh, before Tropical Storm Lee. This is after Tropical Storm Lee. And you can see we even have a little bump up of each of the alkanes and aromatics. And so, um, and we have actually been working with that over time. We're still teasing those data out from the Tropical Storm Lee and Hurricane Isaac. Um, so the other thing that we figured out in the process of doing all of this is we ran an analysis to see which organisms were um, our indicator species. And I, I, I actually didn't run this analysis, but the ant showed up as one of the major indicators. And then this non-biting midge, this chironomic midge. So that organism, the, 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 the young, are grazers on some of those little algae and things like that. So that's, um, those are two good indicators of organisms. So it turns out there's a ton of insects out there, there and spiders, they're hyper diverse. This is just one one year data set where um, we collected, look at 216 genera. My estimate of 100 species was way off. So we estimate that there's more than 250 species. So let's ask, um, so let's talk a little bit more about those hypotheses. So um, we are kind of looking generally at trophic levels of insects, and this is after Hurricane Isaac. Um, so the green represents the uh, herbivores, purple is omnivores, and then the predators. And you can see that the uh, herbivores do increase in response to stress, especially when we add everything together. But also notice that this, the hypothesis that the predators would be uh, the higher levels on the, um, on the food web would be impacted. Um, there's some evidence that in oiled areas that that's happening. Um, so I'm just kind of, I'm going over some studies that, um, just a few of the studies that we've done. So this friend, Trigonotylus, um, they're seed bugs. And um, there's, they're very, very numerous, um, especially in oiled areas. Um, so of 20,000 specimens, we collected 12 and a half thousand of those and counted them. Um, but we worked with a taxonomist and we found that 25% of the, just the insects that are sucking the juices out of the plants, so a very specific herbivore, that um, just over 20% of them were actually new to Louisiana or new to science, so we are, um, having to dig through some of these species and learn about their life histories um, as we go. Um, I'm digging into rare species. I've begun a massive project in terms of looking at our rare species and, and um, trying to understand how important they are. Um, I'm going to, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip this because um, this is just about these plant suckers. Um, but I want to talk about Hurricane Isaac a little bit. So all you need to know, uh, look at on this is these are just some different um, indices that we used. And um, we happened to be out there right before Hurricane Isaac and then came in within a, a couple days of Isaac. And we asked the question uh, over a year, did the ecosystem uh, kind of rebuild itself? And the answer is yes. So the insects are um, with that kind of a stressor, they are very um, resilient. They are not resistant because there was barely any insects out there after Hurricane Isaac, and that what was there didn't belong in the marsh and died off pretty quickly. Um, I would be remiss to not talk about ants. These are the ants that, um, these are the acrobat ants, and um, they live in the hollowed out stems of the Scorobolus or Spartina. Um, and they are, of course, very, very interesting. So we've spent a lot of time out there. The challenge with this is nobody had ever studied these before we started looking at them. So we've had to go through and do life histories and uh, understand what is happening with these. But um, to give you a little bit of the data that we have is we saw initially that there was uh, really no impact on the ants for quite a while. And then very soon after Tropical Storm Lee, we did see an impact. And that's where we're saying like maybe that there was, um, that this is a food web impact. 
Um, and then that continued, even though the ants were flying back in and repopulating, they were, um, and we were seeing the rest of the insects were also relatively suppressed. What would happen is they'd repopulate the area and then they would, um, they would, uh, their population would go down as soon as the heat would come up. And I can talk to you about my hypotheses on why that was. So um, let's revisit these hypotheses. There's a, a plethora of insects in the marsh. Um, we thought that only a few of the organisms would be impacted. It turned out everything was initially affected. Every herbivore, herbivore was affected, just not exactly how we thought. We never thought we'd see these huge numbers. Um, the part about the um, wasps and the high level, trophic levels was actually supported by the data. And um, then also there was times where I would go out there and I'd find one large spider across um, 12 to 20 sites. And that was, um, so there was parts of it where it was not okay. Um, echoing my previous speakers, we need to conduct benchmark sampling because we barely got in there before the oil spill started. Uh, this is hyper diverse. We're still digging through who is there and what they do. We think ants are indicators of uh, stress and recovery and that the marshes are resilient. Um, I'm digging into these low abundance species because they're unique to the region and so we want to understand that more. Um, so we think they're really important. And the system is very resilient plus there's all these refugia for uh, the insects to fly back in. Um, so I just think that there's a lot more um, to be done in this system with looking at uh, the hurricanes and also the residual effects of the oil spill. Um, I'd like to thank you for listening and just keep moving on, moving on. And we're going to do questions later, right? <laughs>